Kyrie Baggert here coming to you live from the north, more specifically, Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. And even more specific than that, we're in front of Ripley's, believe it or not, here in Wisconsin Dells. Now, I've been to every Ripley's in the United States, and this is one of the most unique Ripley's. There's different interactive bits and things to do in here that they simply do not have at other Ripley's. It is a franchise store, meaning it is privately owned apart from the Ripley's corporation, but it is a, you know, a franchisee of that corporation. So a lot of interesting things in here that you don't normally see at other Ripley's. However, they are planning on moving locations this year. I have, I have not been able to figure out a date when they're moving. They're still open right now, but they will be moving in a not too distant future. So I did want to check this uh, Ripley's out while I was in town. I wasn't sure um, how much would change or how much would be moved to the new location. So I figured we'll give this uh, classic location one more look. So please follow me. Like most Ripley's, believe it or not, they have a very unique building here, shaped like an Aztec pyramid. See that plane has crashed into the front. These statues on the outside are Ripley's characters. We have Yang the Unicorn Man right there. But before we stepped inside Ripley's, I wanted to walk over here next door where I believe the new location is. So my understanding is that the Ripley's will be relocated into this building, the former location of Wizard Quest here in uh, Wisconsin Dells. Now, Wizard Quest has been moved down the road. I just did a video there very recently to show off the new attraction. But this old uh, building, supposedly, is going to be the house of the new Ripley's, believe it or not. Now, I'm not actually sure if they will be still utilizing this old building, using both buildings. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this is done and interesting to see how it'll be done in such a short time. These signs out front indicate that Wizard Quest is closed. You can take a little peek here in the window. Not seeing a whole lot in way of, of construction, but um, it'll be interesting to see uh, when this does open up. Over in this window, you see the giant dragon that was part of Wizard Quest. He has not been moved to the location, so I don't know the fate of this dragon, if he will eventually be moved over to Wizard Quest, or if he'll be part of the new Ripley's, or if he'll be thrown in a trash can. Just yes, looking forward to seeing what they do with Ripley's. Definitely will be coming back here and uh, checking it out once it is in place. Did want to show back here behind the current Ripley's building, we do have some, believe it or not, free parking. Unfortunately, the free parking is only there on the side of the building. So if you can figure a way to get your car up there, uh, you can park for free. It does appear that this car here is full of birds. You can hear them cawing from underneath the car. But without further ado, let's check out Ripley's, believe it or not, Wisconsin Dells. Some of the classic characters, Walter Hudson, one of the world's largest men. We have the Cuban Popeye, but because this is uh, Wisconsin, he is wearing a Green Bay Packers outfit. And then everyone's favorite giant, Mr. Robert Wadlow. Here's Eric Sprague. He is uh, the world's most unusual man. Unusual in the sense that he has used tattoos and body modifications to try to transform himself into a half man, half lizard. Let's see this junk man crawling up the side of the wall there, right next to this portrait made of dryer lint. Oh, look at this. We do see the man crawling up the side of the wall there. I guess he's trying to get away from this dog that is barking and trying to bite him on his rear, and also his rear, is a globe. You see a picture of Pulp Fiction. You can see, if you look closely, these are all 
words that make up this uh, painting. And apparently that is all the lines of dialogue spoken in the movie Pulp Fiction. They do have a lot of interactive exhibits here at Ripley's. So uh, it does say, believe it or not, this is not an exhibit. This is a fuse box. So yeah, you have to let people know not to mess with the fuses while visiting Ripley's. Up here, we have some toaster art. This painting is made out of actual pieces of toasted bread. It's surrounded by uh, different varieties of toasters right there. Now right here, we start off with a slew of shrunken heads. You can see all the different shrunken heads there. Looks like they have five, six. See the dangling one there. We have six different shrunken heads. Of course, every Ripley's, believe it or not, has shrunken heads. But uh, this is this is, this is a quite a good collection. Well, apparently, one of these shrunken heads is not real. It says, can you spot the fake? One is not authentic. Oh, number four is the fake. It said it's made out of clay. It says the others are authentic. Oh, number six, it says, is a uh, is one of only five Caucasian shrunken heads in the world. So let's take a look. Hey, okay, number six is the, the Caucasian shrunken head right there. Very, very rare. Oh, and then number four there, they said that is a fake. That is not a real shrunken head. It does look very realistic, though. These are five skulls tied together. Apparently, a, a Filipino warrior killed these five people and then sewed all their skulls together. That's pretty morbid. See all these lamps and different household items all strapped together in this big tower here. But then down here, we have a gremlin. Of course, Gremlin's one of my favorite movies of all time. See the gremlin there made of bolts and screws and other bits of scrap metal. It says, this is the duct tape room. It says, welcome to the world's first duct tape room. Everything has been covered with or is made out of duct tape. So we enter the duct tape room in here. You can see the duct tape bed there. Oh, they got a, a, a chest here that's actually just filled with the empty rolls of duct tape used to make this room. We got a duct tape fireplace there. I would definitely not recommend starting a fire in there. I think duct tape's flammable. I could be wrong, but I think it is. Then we have a duct tape chair, and behind it, a duct tape man standing here behind the chair. Closet here is a very stylish, rotating duct tape jacket. Seems like it would make you really sweaty. Here's a duct tape prom dress. It's actually worn to the prom. You can see the lovely lady there with her prom date. Some duct taped shoes there. A little place to get ready here, also made of duct tape. The mirror itself is reflective pieces of duct tape. Hello. You got some headwear here, the duct tape hats of various styles. And speaking of hats, we have the Mad Hatter, a portrait made of duct tape. Always interesting in Ripley's when they have these fantasy coffins. This is a lizard. So you'd actually be placed in this lizard, then buried in the ground. It's interesting. I mean, maybe like a, a reptile scientist or someone, maybe someone who just loves lizards would want to be married, buried in this. There's different letters that were sent to Robert Ripley. There's one that's in Braille. There's one that's a coaster. There's one that's made out of a uh, letter, made out of newspaper clippings. And it's funny, it says that the, uh, the postmaster got angry because people kept sending weird mail to Robert Ripley that needed some translation. And he said that letters with freak addresses would be returned to sender or sent to the dead letter office. The postal clerks were spending too much time deciphering letters intended for Robert Ripley. The hallway here, like an old temple. We have some of the Ripley's characters, the double-eyed man. He has two pupils in each eyeball. This is the Padang women of Burma. They would strap coils around their neck to cause themselves to have very long, extended necks. There is a person that would wear discs in both their upper and lower lips. There's a human bone flute, which is a pretty morbid thing, but possibly even more morbid is this 
rotating skull sculpture that we have here in this case. Entering through here, you see a crashed cargo plane and various pieces of cargo that have been smashed open. You can see actually some of them have holes in them where we can peek and see what cargo they have. This is a Tibetan monkey skull that's been covered in jewels and metal. Oh, and look at this, this button here causes the monkey skull to rotate. Oh, you can make the monkey rotate. Crazy spinning monkey head. And here we have a Chinese opium pipe and a cricket cage. It says that in China they would raise fighting crickets and I guess train the crickets to kill each other. This is a West African hate god. Apparently every nail would be a bad intention focused on a singular individual. You see all these nails. So someone really hated someone, pounded all these nails hoping that something bad would happen to an individual person. In there, got a little hair reef made of human hair. At first, I looked at this python and thought it might be made of Legos. And then I got a little closer and I realized it was smooth and I thought, oh, maybe it's made of Maybe it's made of jelly beans that's actually made out of fake uh, press-on fingernails. So, a fingernail python. This is the world's greatest fake here. They have a very teeny tiny little Fiji mermaid in there. I love Fiji mermaid, one of my favorite, uh, favorite uh, little creatures. Here is a tattoo that has been removed from a human body says that a uh, the individual would remove tattoos from people that did not want them back in the 1930s so he cut this one off someone just I guess think about them really good before you get them kids see here coming out of the side of the plane the big box with a fur bearing trout inside so look at these boxes this box here has a four horned Australian geep apparently it's a half goat half sheep. This is a really crazy tableau here. It's the skeleton of a snake, a python attacking the skeleton of a monkey. That monkey looks terrified and, 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 and you know snakes, they're, they're just way more scary with their skin off for some reason. So we enter this oceanic room. We see the crack in tentacles bursting from the wall. Here is recycled art. It's actually, a, oh, it's lights just, the eyes just went out. That's a angler fish of some sort. Oh, eyes just popped back on. And then a porcupine puffer fish back there. Oh, this shark. He's got uh, lifeless dead eyes that are black. Black like a doe's eyes as he devours poor unfortunate Rodney Fox, who is a famous a uh, shark victim, famous because his shark wounds were so incredibly gross. So we peek in these holes here. Got a big old, big old crab. But even crazier than that, there is a two-headed tortoise right there. That's pretty zany. There's items that have been retrieved from shark stomachs. Oh, there's even an arm right there. This cow here was all made out of puma running shoes. You can see the soles of the shoes comprising the, sh the cow's skin there. And then we have a happy cowpoke over here next to the cow, and he's busy gurning the act of swallowing your own nose. This bull here bursting out from the wall as we see some unique cow mutations. There's the, the skulls, the connected skulls of a two-headed calf. You can see they have one spinal cord that branches off into two heads. And then this is a two-faced cow. A, not two-faced in the fact that the cow would tell you one thing and do another. Say one thing to your face, one thing behind your back. But no, he literally had an extra face coming out of the side of his first face. Down there we can see the taxidermy version of the two-headed calf. You can see how he has two heads stuck right next to each other. This is Slim, the six-legged steer. He's got one leg sticking out the side of his back. If we look 
there he's got another leg sticking outside the back. So two of the legs coming out of his back. So he can't really use them for walking very much. Down there is a four-legged chicken. That's uh, four extra drumsticks. The six-legged lamb has legs coming out in weird places. One leg out of the middle of its back, and then another leg coming out of its butt. There's a little two-faced piglet. It's got one eye there in the center, and then one eye on each side. Imagine if Piglet from The Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, imagine if he had two faces. Got a bridge here, a rope bridge that we can walk across. Actually look down at the crashed airplane there with all the cargo spilled out. Here we have an old English prison cell and some other variety of items here. Masonic coffin and skeleton the Masons would use skeletons in their uh, secret presentations. It's various torturing items. This is a torture wheel and a guillotine used for chopping off people's heads. There is a coal basket and tongs. This would also be used for torture. A lot of, a lot of really mean torture devices out there. The Iron Maiden of Nuremberg here. Take a peek inside there. You notice there's actually a secret compartment we can squeeze through. And then, uh-oh, we end up back in the English prisoner cage. Oh no, gotta get out of here. They have a full room dedicated to vampires. We see the vampire here in his casket. He's been stuck with a stake and murdered while he was sleeping. They also have some vampire trivia here. It says, what was the first vampire novel? Was it Bram Stoker's Dracula? Was it John Palladoris, the vampire? Or was it Gustav Le Roger's Le Prisonnier de la Planète Mars? Now that number C, or, or answer C, sounds like uh, it's something to do with planet Mars. I don't think vampires are from Mars. So we hit the button over here to see which was the first novel was it was it Bram Stoker's no no it was John Paul Aridus's The Vampire you can see here where vampire killing kits were sold for 20 francs this would be sold to tourists entering vampire country and they were told that they legitimately had to be afraid of vampires so they were sold these kits that included everything they needed to kill vampires with holy water the different spices they've got some candles in there and uh, yeah, everything you need to murder a vampire. Up here we can see an actual vampire skull. You can tell by the uh, pointy teeth. And there's the monstrous man himself. The original OG vampire, Vlad Tepes. Perhaps known better as Vlad the Impaler. Also called Vlad Dracul, meaning Vlad the Dragon. Some feel may have been the inspiration for one Count Dracula. Now one interesting thing that's kind of unique to this Ripley's here, you see this fireplace right there. And it says inside the fireplace, the darker side of Ripley's. You can actually duck down in to the fireplace here. As we see, there's the vampire, the vampire woman from Mexico in here. But there's also a stairway and winding staircase in here that will take us up to a secret area. We wind our way up here. This is the darker side of Ripley, so some of the stuff up here is actually some of the most intense stuff in the Ripley's collection. This is a German Vemic skull. You can see it actually has a spell written on the top of the skull, and apparently when they'd have uh, court cases involving capital crimes, they would swear on this skull, put their hand on the skull like they swear on a Bible these days, and they believe that the spell would force them to tell the truth. Other horrible items up here, a chastity belt, and then a hook there. I'm not sure what that hook is used for, but probably something horrible. Is that this chest here was used by a warlock by the name of Dr. Gerald Gadner. Now this is one of the most amazing and ghoulish items in the Ripley collection. That is the head of Peter Curtin. That is the actual head of Peter Curtin, split into two pieces and 
put on display rotating here. Peter Curtin, known as the Dusseldorf Vampire, right there. One of the most notorious serial killers in the history of Germany. One of the most cruel humans and evil humans to ever walked the earth. And uh, his head wound up split in half, dangling from a hook here in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. There's the chopped off, executed head of Mary Queen of Scots. Actually a replica of her head. It says this was chopped off on February 8th, 1587. Some more torture items here in the walls. These are flesh pinchers. They'll probably really hurt, so I'm gonna pinch you with those. Oh, that skull right there. I still have some weird carvings in it. Peeking in here, we see Elizabeth Bathory. Ironically, she is in the Bathory or bathtub. She would uh, be known for bathing in the blood of virgins that she murdered. Some trace the uh, vampire legend directly back to her. Very graphic display here at Ripley. So graphic, I can't even show you the whole display. There's a sculpture of a woman being burned at the stake, which for some reason is made out of angel hair pasta. More execution and torture items up there. The executioner's axe. This pig head that they'd make people wear. Go back down these spiraling stairs and head back out to the fireplace. It says rub this bracelet and it will bring you good luck. See the bracelet there will reach to rub it and oh no. You can see my hand passes right through it like it's some sort of optical illusion or maybe it's even a cursed amulet. I'm actually surprised they're not blasting me with compressed air right now. Some Asian items here, the Temple of Heaven and a Jade Buddha statue. This room here is very unique. You won't find this in any other Ripley's. This chamber here, you can see it's like a, you, you have this pillar in the center and then all these other doors that lead to separate chambers. You see these gems right here, actually push down. I think you have to push down on the, the gem here. And you can see it causes the ceiling to start rumbling and collapsing like there's an earthquake of some sort. And then this uh, stone rises up. Because these to tombs are home to some of the rarest artifacts in the world. So rare that a few have been hidden. Take note of the symbols above the door of each tomb as you enter. Explore the tomb for that symbol and press it upon discovery. Your reward will be the unmasking of the intriguing artifacts encased within. So how this works is you go in each side chamber and above the door there's a symbol. So you have to go in to the chamber and find the symbol and press it to activate it so you can actually see additional artifacts. Of course, some cool artifacts in here is a very creepy uh, gorilla skull fetish statue. But I do see the symbol here on the wall, so we're gonna hit that and oh, look at this. You can see this hidden skull pops up from underneath this smaller skull. See, this chamber is very scary. There's all sorts of super spooky skeletons poking out of the wall. Very intimidating figures up here. The most intimidating of all is this terrifying baboon. So as I look at these doors, I think they used to open up when uh, you activated the pillar. You can see how this slides out here. So it looks like door with this Aztec calendar on it would be pulled out to here. And then when you hit the pillar over there, it would push out and allow you to come in here. And then you, when you go in there, you would look for that symbol. So I don't know, keep an eye out. Do you see that symbol somewhere in here? Okay, got the symbol right there. Oh, there we go. They have the, at least the secret artifact. This is a, a, a precious baby made out of coins from all over the world. That's, that is pretty crazy. In this treasure chest, apparently they have wooden money. I guess these bills or certificates, it's like wooden nickels, except they were actually bills made of wood. So this chamber here must be the Egyptian chamber. It's got King Tut's head on the door. 
So look at that symbol. Appears to be another casket, or a sarcophagus rather. This is like sticking out a little bit. Oh, okay. This is a door. Leads us to a hidden chamber back here. Oh, and it's got the world's oldest beer there. It says it was bottled, bottled in 1996, but it was a 5,000 year old fermented Egyptian beer that was put in the bottle. There's our symbol, let's see. Oh, 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 that's dropping. And what do we got? Oh, mummy, mummy hand and mummy foot. That's pretty horrifying. Different statues in here. West African birthing statue. Some holes in here. You can actually see Pete, part of a skull in there. I actually reach my hand in another hole and you can play with this skull chunk. That's interesting. Now this is unusual here. If you pull back this, you have a, a little thing. You can get a little tube you can get inside of. And I guess you can rotate yourself to view. I don't know if I can fit in here, and I don't know, but I'm going to just stick my arm back in here and see what you can actually look at. Oh, is there cool stuff in there? Yeah, I don't want to put my body in this hole necessarily, but hopefully I got a little bit of a peek. On... Yeah, so you open this up, you climb in, and then somehow you rotate it so you can look at that exhibit over there. Really weird. Okay, heading into another chamber. Remember that symbol as we head inside? Some Chinese slippers that would be worn by a woman with bound feet. As well as a Chinese compass there. Okay, back here, there's the symbol there. I think maybe something's gonna pop up here, so I'm gonna hit the symbol. Oh, is it coming? Okay, there it goes. What is behind it? It's Shun Chi, the golden monk. It's a little dark back there, but you can see Sun Chi. This basket here, it's got like a glowing red light coming out of it. It's a snake. And... Oh, jeez. A little bit of compressed air there. Heading into this chamber, we have a sword and shield on the door. Over here are twin Indonesian daggers. Those are pretty, pretty crazy looking daggers there. Okay, I see the symbol. Let's see what it does. Oh, opens up the chamber back here. And we see the Indonesian chainmail armor and shield. It says this pistol here was involved in a duel where a sheriff was fighting a Mexican bandit and the sheriff shot his gun into the bandit's gun. This is the bandit's gun right here. So the, the sheriff shot a bullet that went into the into the nozzle of the gun and disabled, disarmed the gun, did not damage the gun at all. It went, the bullet went perfectly inside the gun. And uh, it, it says the bullet is still lodged in there to this day. That's pretty crazy. Here is samurai armor for a small boy. There's one more chamber here, but it looks like it's just full of creepy bugs. I guess we can look down the barrel of this. Oh yeah, just a tube full of creepy bugs. It says only one way out, you got this. So we got a room painted like the jungle tops. We've got to stay on this rope bridge Ooh. and not and not fall. There we go, made it. it looks now we exit through the gift shop. Some Ripley's t-shirts here. This one says, I'm not weird, I'm limited edition. It's got a shrunken head on it. And then this one says, Bizarre Wars. It's like Star Wars, but with Ripley's characters. See the Gurning Man is Darth Vader. Luke Skywalker is the Cuban Popeye. Han Solo is the lighthouse man that put a candle in his skull to, to give lighthouse tours. And uh, yeah, there's that, that, that dog with a weird smile, is Chewbacca, and uh, the Death Star is actually the world's largest ball of rubber bands. Actually got a horse made of horseshoes here in the gift shop. According to Robert Ripley, this is a Chinese 
wedding palaquin to be used to carry a bride during a wedding. Look at Mr. Ripley there. Have some freak animal plushies. A two-headed tortoise like we saw in the museum. We got a two-headed parrot. And what is this? A one-eyed unicorn lamb. That's pretty amazing. A little two-headed cow there as well. Thank you for joining me here at the Ripley's, believe it or not, here in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. This may be our last trip through this particular Ripley's building, but I do fully intend to return to Wisconsin Dells when the new Ripley's opens up and checking out their new exhibit. It's supposed to be this year. Uh, the every source I've read online says it'll be this year. I don't know when. I don't know if this will be open through the summer or not, and if they'll be moving very soon. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see, and I'll come back when appropriate. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe and let you know where I'm at. Oh, someone just talked to me. Hello, the guy in the taxi waved at me. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. And uh, if you like these videos, subscribe. It'll let you know where I'm at currently. Did I already say that? Anyways, if you want to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling five different styles of enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that information is in the description. And all that just helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.